Hi, Harvey. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for being here today and representing Nottingham Trent University. So in this video, we are going to talk about Harvey's background, then what it's like to study at NTU, her timetable, her course and more. So if you want to study any other course at NTU, this interview will give you like a generic idea on what to expect. So I have also conducted many other interviews of different students from different universities. So do check them out. I've added a link in the description box below. And without further ado, let's begin. So hello, welcome. Hi, Devani. Thank you so much. So can I please formally ask you to introduce yourself? What is your name? What course are you studying? And again, at which university? Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Hardi Goradia. Uh, I'm here at Nottingham Trent University for studying LLM Health Laws. Okay. So can you tell me a bit about your background first? Where are you from? And what did you do your bachelor's degree in? Mm -hmm. So I am uh, formerly from Mumbai itself. Uh, lived there all my life. Uh, I did a five years law course from University of Mumbai. Uh, so I have two degrees dual. Uh, it's bachelor's in legal science and bachelor's of law. So that's BLS LLB. Mm -hmm. Graduated in 2019. And uh, after that, I worked for around two years. Uh, I am a defense attorney. And uh, yeah, I have um, an all India bar license to work in India as well. Mm -hmm. So after which I wanted to specialize uh, in medical laws. And that's why I thought that what better way than to come to UK and pursue it. Right. Perfect. So you have studied, then you have a bit of work experience and then you figured out you want to do your master's. So yeah. what, what made you choose this very university out of all others? Yeah. No, honestly, I always knew that I wanted to do a master's because honestly speaking, there are thousands of lawyers in India. Okay. And definitely they may be a specialist in something or the other. But I um, definitely wanted to make sure that I do something in medicine, law, or, um, yeah. So I had my upper year elective as medical law as well. So when I came here, um, I thought that, okay, let me research about what courses they have in UK. So NDU was top 10 for health laws, and the modules over there uh, were really good. So, for example, there's other universities like Liverpool as well, but the mm -hmm. modules over there were a little bit generic, if I may. Uh, okay. They did not suit my needs. Uh, NTU has really niche modules such as medical use of the human being and beginning and end of life and I also checked uh, who's teaching those modules so we have one of the best professors over here who is um, Dr. Austin Garwood Gowers and I thought what better choice than pick up NTU. Perfect so let's talk a more about NTU and your course in general so can you tell me a bit about your mm -hmm. application process like how what were the universities you shortlisted otherwise and how did you get here? Mm -hmm. To be very frank with you, I apply to a lot of universities. I am that person who never wants to take any chances. So usually students apply for seven to eight universities. I'm very ashamed. I don't even want to tell you how many I applied to. Mm -hmm. But I got into quite a lot, um, even Russell groups. So yeah, but I think NTU was one of the best choices. So uh, I applied and it took over um, one working month for them to get back. And in the meantime, there were some glitches because University of Mumbai, especially for law, Back in my days, I'm not sure now, they never provided a consolidated mark sheet for the GPA and stuff. So I still don't know my GPA. I just know that this is the grading that I've got. So and you wanted that and a couple of other things in between. Maybe that took time. But usually, yeah, the application process was smooth. Uh, not bad. They're very cooperative. Mm -hmm. They have um, a team India as well who uh, replies to the emails, I think, rather in two working days, even at their busiest times. Mm -hmm. Very approachable. So yeah, uh, I heard back from them. And yeah, that was about it. Okay. Pretty much, pretty smooth. That's amazing. So I saw you got a scholarship from NTU, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me yeah. how was the application process? How were you selected and what were the benefits? Yeah, yeah I did. So basically, uh, there are universities in the UK which give you a scholarship along with your offer letter based on your grades. But NTU does not do that. They make sure to have a scholarship committee and um, check the nitty gritties of your portfolio as well. So I had to apply for one. They had a series of questions that... Um, I had to answer mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I did that. And about uh, after a month, I heard back from them that I had received a 50% scholarship. So okay. that was great. It was amazing. I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting it, but um, yeah, lovely experience. So was that one of the reasons you chose NTU over the universities or it was despite that? 
if you don't no, no, definitely not and definitely not uh, a lot of students yes they did that but i had accepted my form offer from ntu uh, made it unconditional uh, even before i got the scholarship i was very certain that even if i have to pay 16 lakhs which is the full amount for my course mm-hmm. i would definitely go for ntu regardless of whether i get the scholarship or not this right. was definitely an add on that's good amazing congratulations <laughs> So can you tell Thank me, you. like, how was your year divided? How many semesters do you have, and how many subjects in each semester? So basically, for LLM Health Law, um, we have three modules per semester, and uh, that's about it. We have practice assessments, which are the formative assessments, and then we have the regular assessments, five thousand words, which mm-hmm. is the summative assessments. And be- in between that, um, we did not have presentations because. Um, my modules the ones that i chose for health law are very very theoretical and they're very niche subjects but mm-hmm. i do know um other specializations in llm my friends are going through a series of presentations so it just depends on who your professor is and what their approach is uh, yeah so that's how our modules are divided and of mm-hmm. course and that at the end of it we have a dissertation of 12000 words and an employment challenge okay uh, i am doing my oh, sorry mm-hmm. you can go ahead Sorry. Sorry. So I am doing my employer challenge with International Court of Justice. Um. So you can choose between a host of different employers that the university gives you, or you can do your own. So that's how our year is divided. Perfect. So can you tell me, like, do you have lectures every day? So you have three uh, modules. So you might you might be having three days of lectures. But can you tell me, like, what are the timings? What what is expected from you during the? Yeah, absolutely. So we have three days a week. Especially I had three days a week because of three modules. Mm-hmm. But there were some of my friends in other specializations such as sports law, wherein they had one day and three modules in one day. Sometimes I would have two modules in one day. Two mm-hmm. hours each. They mm-hmm. would be seminars. Mm-hmm. Um, no lectures, which is amazing. Ah, uh, yeah. So that would be around nine to eleven, or sometimes it would be one to three. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So what Thank is the difference that. between a lecture and a seminar for you? Like, what is a seminar? In- yeah. So seminar is basically something which mostly NTU does for post grad students, wherein it's not just the lecture deliver uh, lecturer delivering um his speech or whatever he's supposed to teach. Seminars are basically much much better is what i like about um, the uk's educational system as well because the students can interact the professors are very interactive with them they ask you what is your opinion they are not offended about if their your opinion is different than theirs um mm-hmm. what do you think about this it's very it's not uh, kind of like one on one sort of a thing where you're engaging with the class so lectures are basically just one way Mm-hmm. and seminars are basically when the entire group is discussing something and it's amazing i i love it so you mentioned your subjects are very theoretical so how how mm-hmm. does studying look like do you have to study at home be prepared and go to these seminars or how does your teacher help on that front yeah absolutely so the staff here at ntu and the professors are absolutely fabulous uh, with all the preparation we used to get emails every single um, week in fact after every single lecture and some of our professors would even record podcasts if that makes sense so whatever we did during the lecture he would uh, accumulate it and sort of give us a briefing and uh, again back to your question we w- would have like lots of pre reading for example sometimes it would even be 50 documents that we had to read especially because it's theoretical mm-hmm. uh, yeah and then we go to the seminars prepared and so that we can engage with the professor we can engage with the students have a hearty discussion so yeah pre reading would be very long very right. tedious, yeah so it is mostly like when you don't have lectures most of the time you are just reading and doing your own kind mm. of research so yeah. um, you know to get into this you know uh, health law like i don't know a lot about law so my questions might be a bit vague so yeah sorry about that but do you yes. think having like being a fresher who has just studied generic law is it easy for them to make that transition or are you having a you know a bit of experience added to your benefit uh honestly coming from india i can answer that way not from any other country because i have a lot of friends coming from nigeria as well so yeah most of my friends over here and my classmates colleagues acquaintances whatever you want to call it this is their second or third masters is it not kidding mm-hmm. especially for law yeah uh yeah so definitely the experience counts because you know how to go about with it you know a lot of theoretical aspects um yeah it definitely counts it definitely helps especially for uk and india because a lot of our laws are similar in a way if i may uh yeah definitely definitely helps 
so you know 100%. after you know i have had a couple of interviews that people had a bit of work experience and when they came to do their master they felt like the information is a bit more repeated and nothing new so do you get that perspective or are you some learning something revolutionary and which has really added to your skill sets no definitely this was more than a 360 degree change if i may it was very very different my work experience over here has nothing to do with what i did in fact even when i chose medical law for my upper year elective Mm-hmm. it's totally different than what these guys do over here it's revolutionary absolutely there's no comparison but that's amazing that's amazing and the people who are doing multiple masters is it like recommend like even after the, you you know graduate from ntu are you planning to do another masters or what's the plan for you mm-hmm. so basically i love learning even if that sounds really cliche so when in school i was doing multiple courses and even in those five years i was along with my studies and my internship <clears throat> excuse me so i was doing an internship since the first year all five years mm-hmm. i was studying uh, law for five years as well and then i was doing multiple certifications for forensic science and stuff mm-hmm. so for me yes learning is a process and it should never stop but that doesn't mean that i want to force you another masters mm-hmm. if it's in my hands or if i get a permission to stay here or things work out i don't mind doing a phd as well okay. uh, that's all right but definitely not another masters i think one is enough and you can go on to the other one Okay, so in terms of teaching, do you have like mm-hmm. mostly is it more like a more of reading or do you have pre-recorded lectures as well? So, for example, at King's College London, we had like a platform where you know there were pre-recorded videos as well, like you know small snippets of things and also like those things. So, how is it for you? Yeah, so basically a bit of everything, especially for my modules. What the professors would do is give us a lot of pre-reading, which all of us would definitely, definitely come or uh, go and read, because that was an important aspect. And after that, uh, the professors would engage with us, um, yeah, and the broadcast as well. So no pre-recorded lectures as mm-hmm. stuff. It would be very um one to one, if I may. The class size is smaller, which is nice because you get to have a lot of more. word with the a professor and the fellow students so okay. no pre recorded lectures and do you have lectures like se- or seminars online or you have to be there in person definitely in person for us it was all in person okay so can you tell me a bit about your assignments um you have mentioned bit about it before but like more in detail like what is expected from you what is a 5000 like whatever like whatever you have done so far can you just tell me about it mm. So uh, basically, we follow the Oscola referencing style. I think business students follow the Harvard one. I'm not too mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that transition was very difficult for me because in India, I did not even know what referencing, especially coming from MU. I was like, oh my god, it was all over the place. I did all my research. Uh, everything was done. But after that, I had a lot of one-on-one support from the library. Mm-hmm. um there are mentors there and they explained to me very patiently i think i had three or four sessions only for a scholar referencing so mm-hmm. yeah uh, in your assessments definitely the referencing as a first time student can be very difficult but we had 5000 words and uh, we were asked to um probably bring in more of primary sources mm-hmm. and not secondary sources oh, and even if you're quoting uh words from the author it shouldn't be more than three or four words especially then you would yeah so and paraphrasing um was something which you could do but probably avoid and the thumb rule for our assessments is what the professors repeatedly tell us is that if i can read it in some book or somewhere easily you, we are not going to grade you higher so definitely the grading system here at ntu is not lenient it's pretty strict mm-hmm. even for students who are barristers from nigeria or really high posts they are complaining about how um the grading is very strict but that's also a challenge and i think yeah right it, it helps us bring um go at top uh, higher but yeah definitely the assessments are difficult correct so did you take one of your subjects and given assignment for example like what kind of new input did you have to go do or something like that uh so basically they do not expect us to give new inputs or a new research altogether just like a phd because this is a masters but yeah. they would always um you know raise emphasis on the fact that you are on level 7 which is a masters so we want to see that sort of a thing we are not comparing you with the undergrads here at ntu so definitely a challenge uh, but what i would personally do is look for peer reviewed journals or not take a lot of content from textbooks just really pay attention to what your professor professor is asking you and probably also schedule one on one meetings with them drop in sessions make full use of them the professors here are very very friendly um very approachable 
So mm-hmm. I think that is the sort of thing that you could inculcate in your assessments to stand out from the crowd. Right. And do you mostly have individual assignments, or do you have some group as well? So um, sometimes we do have group, not assessments. I would say assessments are only individual. You have to research on your own uh, independently. But for example, engaging in class for. Uh, I think one of my international criminal law lectures, the first or second session was a group session. We had to give a presentation. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that. But assessments are definitely individual. Okay, interesting. So how many hours would you stay, say do you study in a day? Uh, <laughs> I am a very dynamic person. So sometimes I study all day. Sometimes I don't at all. Sometimes on, I'm on my bed. But usually... Um, from tomorrow because it's 1st april and i have my assessments due on 9th may i would say at least like 4 to 5 hours is more than mm-hmm. enough mm-hmm. it also depends on the person but i would not do more than 4 to 5 hours right so i also wanted to know like because you said it's very theoretical and all of that so how much leeway you have to give your own point of view uh, or is it mostly like you know you are doing research combining and also like having your kind of point of view but what kind of weightage does it have? Like, for example, we did not have that kind of freedom. Mostly it was like research-based and everything, all your opinions are formed due to some theory or something like that. So how is it for you? Correct. Correct. Just absolutely the same way. Definitely we do have leeway. So the thing that I love about our professors, and I'm sure that every professor in the UK university would have said this, is that, um, for example, in uh, my case, if a judge has not agreed to a certain perspective, uh, Sorry, if there is an opinion that you don't agree with the judge, you can write about it that this is what judge so-and-so said, but I don't agree with it. Okay. But definitely make sure that you have um, some sort of literature to support your argument. It cannot be bold arguments that da da da. this is what I think. No, you can disagree, but you also have to provide literature on it. So we definitely do have the leeway, but no bold leeway, if that makes sense. Yeah, got it, got it. Same for us. Um, yeah. so how many students are there in your class? Depends from module to module. So, for example, um, the one that Austin teaches us, I told you about the professor who is very famous here in the UK, that would have more than 20 students. And uh, another one has about 11 or 12. So, oh, it right. also depends right. on the module. The professor. Mm-hmm. And do you get a chance to interact with students from different, uh, you know, pathways, if that's the correct word? like? So, here at NDU, they keep having a lot of these social events. Every week, we would have more than a dozen events. So you have really great opportunities to interact with fellow students, especially post-grads. So yeah, definitely meet a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And how many Indians do you have in your class or is it more diverse? Mm. Yeah, so basically in my module, I don't have any Indians at all. Mm -hmm. Um, But in other modules, I think there would be one or two, especially for the other one, but not more. Okay. And how interactive students or active students are in class? Do they often answer or everybody is a bit more reserved? Nobody in my modules, especially nobody's reserved. We have a lot of opinions. Sometimes the professor has to politely tell them that, you know, guys, we are kind of running out of time. So it would be nice if we can carry on the other. So definitely not. Mm -hmm. So if I had to ask you, like, what you wish you had studied or learned before starting this course, what would that be? Definitely referencing. Uh, a scholar. I knew that this would be something that I would have to deal with, but I did not know it would be such a big deal because it took a lot of my time in my previous assessments. I had more, less time to research and more time on how to reference those sources. So I think students should definitely take care of that fact Okay. before coming home. So can you tell me the few key differences you found in education in UK and in India? Definitely. Um, I think education in India was definitely theoretical, but it was very generic, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure if it's my modules that I chose, which are theoretical or in greater detail. But for example, if I were to compare medical law that I studied only for my upper year elective and the medical law that these guys studied, like vast difference, Zameen Asman ka farak, it was extremely different. Um, So my professors in the first class for um, those modules asked that, is there anyone who studied medical law over here? And I raised my hand very confidently. She's like, oh, so you must be knowing this and that. And I'm like, oh my God, no. I'm sure that in India, even for master's courses, they wouldn't teach this. So mm-hmm. they are like, so the other students were like, we did this for our undergrad. It's so normal. Mm-hmm. Like, oops. Oh, yeah. Embarrassing. Mm. But definitely the key difference. And another difference, not um, educationally, but in terms of professors, I would say that in India, the professors are kind of really... 
tied up with what they do and stuff unpopular opinion they are very very you cannot i mean especially for my university professors some of them were really good back in uh, mumbai but some of them would be really like stringent and rigid in their ways and they were not approachable they would get offended if you disagree with their view you wouldn't even think of that in india right over here mm-hmm. it's a totally different thing so i know for example that i'm doing an assessment and i don't agree with dr austin's view about euthanasia for example like mercy killing um but i'm sure that even if i go against his view and write something um totally different he would grade me as per i deserve and he wouldn't you know take it in the wrong way or something but in india i've definitely seen that sort of thing right so after you graduate from ntu what are the career opportunities you have here so we have a really good employability team uh, we can chat online we can um, also visit them cv this that everything so probably for me I, i am going to be taking the barrister's program i'm going to be applying for an exemption um generally you have to do one more year of course for being a barrister here and one year of pupilage um but yeah that is something that i would be doing okay. not studying because i practice for two years so i can apply for exemption mm-hmm. and that's how it will go for me okay so you know i have couple of law again my knowledge law knowledge is all over the place but what i've seen from like most of my friends are freshers studying law and for them like you need some kind of s sqe exam and things like that so how do you get around that and do you like recommend like students to work for two years and then come to the uk to do law to get that exemption or how does that work mm-hmm. no no definitely not to each their own honestly even i'm not sure what kind of exemption i might get uh, and sqe uh, is for solicitors and for barristers it's a different course okay. altogether mm-hmm. but um yeah there's a vocational part there's uh, there's different parts to it it's very confusing because every year they keep making changes mm-hmm. even i'm yet to wrap my head around it but no work experience yeah it may help for an exemption but it depends on a lot of factors and it depends on the board if they want to give you an exemption or you are supposed to appear for exams so nothing is written in stone That's so exactly. yeah okay got it so can you tell me like one favorite thing about your university uh yeah diversity honestly over here and again the actually the fact that it was it's the infrastructure is amazing honestly i have uh, seen a couple of universities over here and definitely they are amazing and stuff but they're not modern universities you know what i mean um you feel really lively you feel like w- you, you just think about it and it's there right so we were even given the modern university of the year award this year as well so that's amazing i love it um that and again the diversity the amount of approachability that all the professors and all the staff over here has um yeah and what would you say like a factor which your university can improve on or you're not very happy with uh well i can't really think of anything as of now which just mm-hmm. been 6 months that i came here um right. so far it's been it's been nice mm-hmm. um Yeah, I I'm not really sure. I don't think so. Okay, no problem. So, are you part of any clubs or societies? I don't you. Yeah, I am a part of the award-winning Lex Law Society. Um, it's as the name says, it's a law society. They keep arranging a lot of events and law balls and everything. That's mm-hmm. amazing. And other than that, do you ever get time to join any other societies or like studying keeps you busy? Yeah, studying definitely keeps me busy, especially the fact that uh, I aspire to be a barrister, and it's a lot of stress and pressure itself. Mm-hmm. But there, there are more than like hundred clubs and societies over here, so it's definitely something to keep you engaged with. I'm just part of one for now. So I wanted to ask you. You said the employability team is really good at NTU. Can you tell me like how do they really help you? Like, do they help you to prepare your CV? Do they have personal interview sessions, or how does that work? all of the ones that you said and a lot more they tailor your cv and um they are not stringent and all with anything so for example if you are home for easter holidays or just in general you want to do uh, talk to them online they'll do it online they have a software wherein you can create a cv their way they'll have a look at the cv they'll help you with the cover letter they'll show you opportunities of where you can apply how you can apply they'll have a face to face practice interview with you they'll give you tips Mm-hmm. um lots of things actually um we even have three or four portals for jobs it can be part time jobs can be uh, graduate jobs uh, anything we have job shop uni temps so you name it and you uh, so these are all internal uh, job portals and you interesting mm-hmm. 
and uh, how is the attendance in general because of course you like studying and like you want have big aspirations <laughs> you must be very you know attending quite often but otherwise is it very strict for a person who is just coming there and also wants to work part time and things like that uh yeah so um fortunately or unfortunately i never saw any of my friends miss more than one lecture in Uh, so my llm is almost over except the dissertation part my attendance is 100% but in general none of my friends missed it um so i'm not too sure about the attendance policy but um i do know that when we have personal tutor meetings one on one after every term they do check our attendance and they will send you an email asking if there's something wrong and if your attendance is really really low there will be a board to look into your progress as well as why you're not attending that's not something that's acceptable Okay, and then tell me how it's like living at the university. Do you stay on the university campus, campus, or do you stay like outside? Like how how is Nottingham? Mm-hmm. Nottingham is lovely. To be honest, when I uh, got into Nottingham, I came here by taxi from Heathrow, right? And I'm not sure if you or your viewers have seen um, Shit's Creek on Netflix. So it almost felt like that. The town was like it was too deserted, uh, and it was too slow. And coming from a city like Mumbai. which is bustling even at 3 or 4 a.m in the morning nottingham shuts at 7 a.m or even 6 and on weekends it's 3 or 4 so i was like what is happening to me why am i here but after 6 months it's just grown on me in fact the fact that i came to london during christmas and not only me but all of my friends were like oh my god when do we go back to nottingham we didn't like london mm-hmm. for that fact unpopular opinion mm-hmm. so nottingham is just i i don't know it's fabulous uh, i cannot get enough of it if i were to have a chance Once I would definitely stay here again uh, after my graduation, but yeah, uh, I stay in a student accommodation. It's not a university accommodation. I did not quite like the um, rooms and studios for the university accommodations. This is ten minutes away from my university, so mm-hmm. yeah, the so ten minutes walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, what minutes. a privilege! <laughs> Literally, we have to go for one hour just to get to uni. God. Oh my God. It's really nice, but like most of the postgraduate students, do they stay off campus or how does that work? Ah, uh, generally the undergrads prefer to stay off campus because it's a lot cheaper and they are here for three years. But postgrads generally, ah, uh, the friends that I have seen, they live within a fifteen minutes radius. Fifteen minutes radius. Okay. Okay. So just can you just tell me like three main skills you gained after coming to the UK to study? Um. kind of transferable skills and uh, also the fact that volunteering here um taught me so much so i'm not saying that w- there were no opportunities or such for volunteering in mumbai or uh, in india as such but over here uh, those skills i just think that a lot of transferable skills so to say for example here i'm volunteering with uh, an organization known as hashtag me it's for mental health and awareness and i facilitate a group of uh, students like minded So you know those skills which you cannot probably attain in your home country. You get out of your comfort zone. You start doing all those cliche things which all international students say, but you and I can understand that it really makes sense once you're here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, those um, academically, yeah, referencing. I cannot stress enough on that. And the fact that we don't have exams over here for post grads, uh, especially at NTU. I'm not sure about other universities. The fact that you are independently researching. you are putting a lot of your effort and brain and mind into critically thinking we have heard this so much as master students critically think critically analyze mm-hmm. but that's definitely skills that i have acquired which i don't think i would have acquired anywhere else okay perfect i'm going to send you another link i have like a finances and the conclusion part mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it's my free zoom i'm just going to send it to you yeah <laughs> okay one of the biggest expenses over here is accommodation uh, mine's around 200 per week because i stay in a studio but uh, apart from that i would say it also depends on the fact if you are dining out a lot or you eating at home a lot but on an average about 1500 1500 per... interesting 800 and... yeah mhm and are you doing any part time jobs there yeah i am a student ambassador over here at ntu mm-hmm. um and apart from that again the hashtag me as well although that's not paid it's a voluntary position but right. for part time yes it's uni times right but if you like talking about your friends who are you know with you are they doing part time at a coffee place or things like that or mostly people you know work at the university itself uh yeah some of my friends 
are not doing any jobs at all because getting through a master especially in these modules is very difficult but uh, apart from there that there are some friends who are doing um, healthcare assistant jobs because here in nottingham there's a huge shortage for that mm -hmm. some of them are, are working in restaurants fine dines indian fine dines uh, some of them are working in fast food chains such as wing trap or matty dominos okay that's the usual kind of jobs here and how demanding is working as a student ambassador and what are your roles there so basically what i did is as uh, an accommodation officer so i was supposed to show um, the accommodations and answer the queries to parents and students at one of ntu's campuses mm -hmm. we have a couple of campuses so i had to go there and um, pretty nice uh, yes long working hours you have to stand there for about 6 hours um apart from that yeah pretty rewarding i loved the job i don't mind doing it again whenever there's an opportunity for an open day mm -hmm. but yeah pretty good okay and uh, you talked about like five different campuses right how many diff like how far uh, are more than so um right now the main one which is city campus is where i am based then we have clifton that's about 30 to 40 minutes by bus and then there's brackenhurst um which is 1 hour by bus from here oh. we have the confetti campus and as far as i know they are opening one campus in london as well for music is so it? and we also have the mansfield campus so yeah okay so like i've never been to nottingham but is nottingham trent in uh, university of nottingham quite nearby or uh... <laughs> no you and is very very pretty university of nottingham but it's not nearby unfortunately it would take around uh, 20 to 30 minutes by bus or tram however you want to go no oh, not very close okay mm -hmm. so um you know like after you have you know graduated you're planning to do a phd but your long term goal do you wish to work in the uk itself or do you wish okay. to come back okay. no 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 definitely work in the uk hopefully touch wood um however wherever destiny takes but definitely not planning to come back because um of course no one and nothing or no environment is perfect but i do appreciate the work culture here the people are more friendly they are more polite um they are more understanding so definitely here definitely here and have you started applying for full time jobs yet or are you still working on phd applications how is that going for you Uh, i'm not really working on phd applications as of now uh, i haven't started uh, my research proposal at all i'm trying to kind of first work on my master's thesis proposal because that is something that we are supposed to submit by may as well um mm -hmm. there's really a lot of shortage of time as well because i have three assessments due in may and a research proposal and an employment challenge um and i'm going for summer school somewhere in europe so that as well mm -hmm. but uh, yeah for full time jobs yes i am looking into uh, it as of now but there are no openings for um lawyers so to say because i'm not a qualified lawyer here mm -hmm. so for me uh, it's a totally different ball game but i'm sure there my friends are applying for full time jobs already and some of them even have a lot of offers on hand oh they do uh, you were talking about like employment challenge can you tell me a bit more about that and how is it different from a yeah. dissertation yeah gladly so uh, like i already said we have both but employment challenge is something which you can do um from your employer with whom you're already working it's kind of a practical um sort of a challenge so that the university knows that you just haven't been doing everything theoretically but also there in the real world as well um but i definitely had um opportunities for working part time i could have given both of my employers hashtag me as well as um the student ambassador but i chose to still go ahead and do something else which is international court of justice so i will be working um with the prosecutors over there we have to present to them two questions in group of 6 each but apart from that there were other challenges for example with patent lawyers with family lawyers as far as i remember there was also one challenge to work in the family court and present to the judge over there mm -hmm. so that's something which definitely people law students can look out for lots of opportunities here even for the employment okay. challenge so after that we're supposed to give a reflective report of about 1000 words and you mm -hmm. will also be assessed the final grade on that one oh interesting um mm. and to conclude can you tell me like did your expectations before you come here meet your <laughs> yeah i mean kind of kind of not a mix of both so when uh, i was planning to come to the uk i counted and calculated my expenses in such a way that you know the first month i get there i get a part time job and it'll be a white collar job this that da 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 i mean a lot of us do that right but coming here even finding part time jobs in restaurants especially in nottingham 
it's it's kind of difficult i'm not going to say it. like there are so many youtube videos honestly wherein they are like mujhe to do din mein mil gaya i got it in two days three days i'm sorry that's not how it happens in nottingham i'm glad if it happened for you but no uh, yes expectations versus reality for the finances aspect you don't really realize if you have calculated a budget of around in the higher side 2000 pounds a month it's not going to work out like that there are so many unnecessary and surprising costs that come when you're living alone so that was one expectations versus reality um, part time jobs yes research independent research living alone yes mhm and yeah but you kind of just i think grow with time and kind of settle in Right. Yeah, that, those three were I definitely. I want to ask you one question uh, about your social life in general. Like, is Nottingham, like, as you mentioned, like a lot of places close really soon and things like that. So, what do you do otherwise? Like, because I, like I'm used to the London life. You know how it is in Mumbai. You know, like mm. it's always something happening and you never get bored. So, how do you like keep up with that change, or what do you even do? Yeah, lots of things actually. Although things shut pretty quickly over here, there are some bars and pubs. So Nottingham is a party city, okay, and they do not take it lightly. Every single street would have at least five to six clubs and pubs of different kinds, and you never get bored in that sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you have a good social circle or a close group of friends, there mm-hmm. is always something to do or the other. We have bowling, we have golfing. Um, quite a lot of things we have uh, cinemas over here as well if you kind of go out of nottingham a little bit you have the countryside lots of beautiful parks um yeah the party life is pretty good over here so maybe that and if you had to give like one advice or some kind of advice to upcoming students who are planning to come to the uk or planning to apply to nottingham what would that be yeah definitely uh, i know i'm being repetitive about this but definitely look into referencing especially if you're a law student because uh I think I saw the Harvard referencing, and that was comparatively a little easier. I'm not saying it was very easy compared to Oscola. Oscola is very difficult. It uh, takes into account every single detail of what you're referencing. So definitely, before coming here, if you don't want to waste time, start looking into YouTube videos um, about how to reference your assessments. Independent research over here is very important. You cannot just be like I started from this textbook and um, I I just paraphrased it. and definitely don't use chat gpt or all of those rubbish softwares it's not going to get you anywhere so yeah try and be independent do your own research mm-hmm. uh, come out of your comfort zone did you also have to submit on turnitin or uh, all of your assignments yes always always you're very strict about turnitin mhm and is there anything i missed and you would like to share otherwise as well Mm, no i think that covers uh, a lot of it and uh, yeah i'm really glad we did this and thank you so much for having me yeah i think i learned a lot from you as well very driven <laughs> a lot of inspiration but thank you so much for coming here on this platform and sharing your advice and all it so we really appreciate you and that's it from my side thank you thank you devani have a good day